Good morning, good morning, St. Paul AME. It is a pleasure and a blessing to be here to worship with you today. Um, with that, I will move in transition into our doxology. we will move into our call to worship, and that will be uh, given by Reverend Cedric Flynn and Brother Bill Hillman. I will share my screen right now so we can all go through it together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. For a day in your courts, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. O oh Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises. Amen, amen, amen. Next, we will be moving into our praise and worship by our uh, worship team. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. We're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. We're depending on you to see us through. Dismayed, 
whatever be tied Just know that God is walking by your side Even when you can't see your way clear God will never leave you He's always here So I'm gonna trust in Him To see me through Oh Jesus, we're depending on you Jesus, we're depending on you Jesus, my Lord, we're depending on you Jesus, we're depending on you, we're depending on you to see us through. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, just know that God is walking by your side. Even when you can't see your way clear, God will never leave you. He is always near. So I'm going to trust him to see me through. Oh, Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, yeah. depending on you. Next, we will have our invocation given by Reverend Son Hall. And let us look to the Lord. Holy God, we extol you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We depending on you, God, we praise your name. Great are the works of your hands, Lord. Your justice and righteousness endureth forever. Lord, your works are glorious and majestic. God, we thank you for your compassion and your grace. Lord, you have done all things well. The works of your hands are mighty, Lord, and they extend through all eternity and justify those who are righteous and found within you, Lord. We thank you, God, because you have provided us redemption through your son, our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. Your word says that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, let us fear you and not fear as in to be afraid of you, but to honor you, to revere you, to respect you, to exalt and lift you up, Lord. Let us be wise in this world because we know our place in relation to you, dear Lord. Great and mighty and majestic, glorious, wonderful, awesome God that you are. Lord, we come before your throne of grace humbly on this Sunday morning, lifting up our prayers and petitions, our cares and concerns, dear Lord as our hearts are heavy for those in the nation and island of Haiti, dear Lord, that you would just bless them, Lord. Cover them in the midst of yet another earthquake and those neighboring in Dominican Republic, Lord. We, we ask that you provide peace and shelter and protection. We cannot fully understand the the scope and the breadth and magnitude of your wisdom and all of the things that you are 
working throughout in this world, dear Lord, but we trust you, God. And so let us not only offer our prayers and concerns for those who are living in the midst of destruction, only having suffered something a few years ago, Lord, and on the verge of hurricane season, but let us be supportive to those who are a part of the community, dear Lord, who are facing those struggles, who have loved ones in Haiti, dear Lord. Our thoughts and prayers are, those with, are with those in the country of Afghanistan, dear Lord, as US forces depart in a hurried fashion, leaving so many behind in the wake and aftermath of our intervention, Lord. We pray particularly for women and girls as the Taliban moves in, dear Lord. Have your way in that moment, in that place, dear Lord, that your peace would prevail and let us as Christians understand that we have more of a role to play in this world to stand for justice and peace and love and to be supportive of the least of these, dear Lord. We continue to pray for those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, dear Lord. We pray that our hearts and the minds are shifted and persuaded that we who are not vaccinated would get vaccinated. And for those who for whatever reason choose not to, dear Lord, that we abide by, that they abide by distancing requirements and masks requirements, Lord, so that we can stem the tide of the growth of this Delta variant in our communities. And we know that our community in particular, black communities in particular, poor communities in particular are the most beset upon by this virus, Lord. So cover us and heal us and strengthen us and make us wise in our reverence and respect for you, dear Lord. We pray for this congregation and all the family members who are connected to it, dear Lord, continue to gird us up and bind us together through the blood of Jesus Christ, though we may be far and distant from one another and have rarely seen one another in person recently, dear Lord, continue to sustain us in this uncertain time. We pray for your blessings on the rest of this worship service, Lord. We pray for the preacher of today, dear Lord. We pray for our pastor and his family as they take a well-deserved vacation for rest and rejuvenation, Lord. And we pray that as a body that we will continue to draw believers unto Christ and help them follow him, dear Lord, that we would abide by the great commandment, the great commission to go out into the world preaching Jesus and him resurrected for the salvation of this world, dear Lord. This is our prayer on this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be my posture. Lay 
our scripture reading for this morning. By Miss Sister Leticia Chatham. So the scripture today is from Ephesians 2 one through 10, and I'll be reading from the NIV version. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his grace, love for us, because of his great love for us, excuse me, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your, from our, yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord, and it's already blessed. Amen. Amen. We will have a selection from our praise and worship team. And after that, the next voice you will hear will be from our preacher of the hour, Reverend Danny Mae James Green. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe, yes, I believe, I stand on your word, I stand on your promise, I stand on your word, I stand on your promise, my soul says yes. My soul says yes, even when my faith gets weary, I believe, I believe, for I know that you Believe 
made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. And I want to let you know that it is by grace that you and I have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And we must know that it is only by the grace of God that we have been saved. Don't take it another way and think that it is something good that, good that you did or, or something good that I did. Oh, it is a gift, not by works. And it is a gift from God. And we must follow that lead. A gift we must accept. And when we accept a gift, we appreciate the gift. So the word of God provides infallible proof that we serve a God who is dependable. I believe that each of us have memories of the time that God has proven himself to us. So I am reminding us and saying to the Lord this morning, Jesus, we are depending on you. Hallelujah. So as I go quickly to the text, when Paul was writing the letter to the Ephesians from possibly in prison, he was writing to not only the church of Ephesus, but also the other churches and the small Christian communities that he founded while on his travels. The book of Ephesians displays a powerful impact in the gospel of Jesus Christ in the individual and corporate lives of believers. Well, Paul writes a vivid description of salvation and of God's mercy and God's grace. Paul wanted to persuade the Ephesians to put their faith in the hands of God. So when we look at this text, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, speaks of how God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins and trespasses. If we understand this sacred text, Verse by verse, we are able to identify the ideas of Christ as our Savior and God's mercy and grace that is given to each of us. I am so glad we can depend on Jesus. In these first three verses, Paul focuses on the spiritual state that the people were in before and after their coming to faith in Christ. Now, each of us remember when we first came to Christ. And if there's someone out there who is still trying to figure this thing out, I want you to know that there is a change that comes over you when you come to Christ and when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I want to pause right here to simply say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? I want you just to think about the time in your life when you were not living by the word of God, but his love for you and his love for me made a way that we could not have ever made for ourselves. So in this chapter and in this verse, in verse 1 it says, guess what? Guess what? You were dead. 
You were dead through the trespasses of sin. And I used to ask myself, well, how can I be dead when I'm still walking around? Well, Paul is saying here that we are spiritually dead due to our sins and trespasses and have not truly lived in the eyes of God. Now, I want to pause right here to say we can't look down on nobody. We can't think we're so great that we can do all things through ourselves because the word dead is really not being able to make a godly decision. It means that humans cannot save themselves from sin. Do you remember when you were in sin and having a good time at wherever it was when you were unsaved and you were dead because you did not have Christ in your life? If you did not have Christ in your life, then you were dead. You were dead. Dead how? Spiritually dead. Oh, it means that humans cannot save themselves from sin since we are born into sinful world. So I want you to know that Paul speaks of the actual spiritual state our nature that a non-believer is in. Now remember that was a time now when we were not believers. We weren't born as believers. And so this state is compared to a corpse. Oh, to our dead relatives we've seen. Our dead relatives we have seen cannot defend themselves. So Paul is saying that you're, you, you were some may still be, but when you're separated from Jesus Christ, you are dead. But, hold on, don't go ahead of yourself. But in verses 2 and 3 in this text, in which you once lived, you once lived this way, and you were following the course of the world following the rulers on power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient and still living in their own flesh. Oh yes, he reminds us that all of us must live among the passions out of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses out. And we were, by nature, children of wrath, like all the others that Paul is talking to. Mm -hmm. In these verses, we say we were dead, acknowledge that we were dead. But talk, Paul teaches that every man and woman in this world was born without Christ. Hmm. He further teaches that we are spiritually dead when we are born. Yes, I said that. The word dead refers to that which is inactive, that which is powerless, that which is not functioning for life as God intended it. The dead, the word also refers to that which is separated from its God-given purpose. There is nothing we can do to change this in ourselves. That's why we are saying we are depending on Jesus to see us through. This is God's grace and mercy. When Paul writes, like everyone else, he could be saying that we are in the same spiritual state before Christ as non-believers. Oh yes, but we're going to be transformed because the Lord made a way for us to be transformed from death to life. 
Now, quickly I will say what sin is, just in case somebody's ears is blocked and they cannot really accept the fact that we are sinners saved by grace. So sin is any action, any feeling, any thought that goes against God's standards. Wow. It includes breaking God's law by doing what is wrong or unrighteous in the sight of God. The Bible also describes sins of omission. That is, failing to do what is right. Paul was speaking to the Christians who were members of the church in Ephesus and to us in this day. So when Paul writes here about us being dead, he is not thinking about total inability. He is simply saying that we did the opposite thing God wanted and desired for us to do. But look at our God. Take a look and see what our God did for us. In the midst of the pandemic, when people were falling and dying minute by minute, God protected you, God protected me, and God made a way that we can be alive today. And I think I have spoken enough about the dead. Now look at verse 4. Now when you look at who our God is, his grace and his mercy is, and because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. Oh, how good it is to believe what the word of God has to say to us on this day. And the Bible says, but God, Verses 4 starts with two of the most beautiful words in all the Bible. And it says, but God, God you see, God we love, God we want to adore you. And we are here today to say, but God, in his loving kindness, in verse 4, but God, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. We are alive with Christ. Verse 4 convinces me that I once was dead, but now I'm alive in Christ. Don't you know what it's like to look back over your life? And when I think things over, I just have to say, but God saw in me something that he knew he could use. And when I stop and think about it, I say, Lord, how can you use me? And he just begins to give me answers and says to me, I am God. I am rich in mercy, but my great love, I will never let you down. And so I come today just simply to say, but God in his great mercy found his way to let me know that I am with you, I am for you. Nothing you have ever done cannot be forgiven. Just know that I am God, that I am God. I am your loving God. Not like some things you've gone through in this life. They come and they would go. Oh, and oh, how much I love the Lord who never leaves me and he never forsake me. And I want to leave you with this, knowing that the Lord is good and that the, all scripture is of God, and it is breath, breath, breathe on us. And yes, his word is for teaching, 
His word is for rebuking. His word is for correcting. His word is for training us. And we can depend on God. Yes, I might want to tell you a couple of benefits before I leave you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. There are a couple of benefits that you might want to hear about. Well, in Romans, it tells us that Paul in the Bible teaches us that one of the benefits is that we are no longer under any condemnation. Hallelujah. Two, we are set. We are set. Oh, yes. We are set free from the law of sin and death. And the law will no longer condemn us. How come? Because of Jesus Christ. Christ did something for us we could not do for ourselves. Christ hung on the cross, freely submitted to the will of God, condemning sin in the flesh on our behalf. Oh yeah, we can fulfill the law as, the, as we walk according to the spirit we never had before just because we can trust God and we put our faith in God. Our minds are set focused on the things of the spirit. Now maybe every once in a while the spirit does not have control over us. And yes, we understand that. But we don't have to condemn ourselves because Christ has set us free. So that's why we are saying, Lord Jesus, we are depending on you. Oh yes, Jesus, your grace and your mercy has brought us through. Jesus, we are depending on you. Jesus, we are depending on you. Jesus, we are depending on you to see us through. The verse simply said, Israel came to the water, didn't know what to do. There was no one to help them, couldn't see their way through. Then the Lord moved the water, and they walked right on through. Oh, Jesus, when we were in sin, we didn't know that you loved us. We just thought we'd keep on sinning. And somehow, by the grace of God, you would rescue us. So now, Lord, we are depending on you. Once dead, but God made a way. And we are now alive. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for such a fantastic word. Lord, we are so dependent on you. So um, now we will move into our invitation to Christian discipleship. And don't forget everyone who is has a prayer request to please put that into um, the chat. Reverend Danny Mae James Green, would you please lead us in our invitation to Christian discipleship? I surely would like to ask Reverend Washington. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the word, Reverend Danny Mae James Green. Thank you for reminding us of what Christ has done for us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, mm. that is to send his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so this morning, there's an invitation that we extend to anyone who might be listening, who does not have a relationship with 
Jesus Christ as their own Lord and Savior. He is God's mediator come into the world that we through him might have everlasting life, that we might receive the forgiveness of sins, and that we might live life and life abundantly. And if you've not in, in, investigated that, if you've not invested time in building relationship with God through Jesus, if you've not said, just come into my heart, then this is an opportunity. Would you place your name in the chat? We'd love to pray with you a prayer that just agrees with what the scriptures already say about our need for Jesus and our need for forgiveness, and then allow us to go into relationship. Secondly, if you're in this worship and have not connected with the church or you're not connected now, you don't have a relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ, then we invite you to be a part of the St. Paul family. We'd love to have you knowing that this is an opportunity, especially during these times, that we might connect with folks whom we could never have connected with prior to COVID, because you don't have to be in the geographical location to be connected to the church. And so put your name in the chat, and we'd love to follow up with you with that as well. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Danny May James Green. And even as um, the prayer request uh, may be coming in and the information may be coming in, we certainly would um, take just a moment and go to the throne of grace. Obviously, we are praying for Haiti and we're praying for the people in that region and the DR, et cetera. We're praying for students, families, teachers, and administrators, praying for our leaders, that God would fill their hearts praying for parents and children in foster care. And we're praying that the parents and child would be reunited wherever that's possible, praying for Afghanistan, praying for Haiti, praying for Haiti, yes, indeed. Praying for the firefighters in the western parts of these United States. Amen. Praying for Haiti and the islands affected, indeed. Praying for parents, yes, indeed. Pray that the Lord will eradicate the COVID from this earth. Amen. Pray for mass compliance. Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace real quick. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for the, the teaching and preaching of the word. Thank you, God, for the teacher and preacher this morning. Thank you because you have reminded us again that no matter what we think of ourselves, according to the way you see us, before Christ, we were dead in our transgressions. But God, thank you, you have made us alive. Thank you that you are continuing to make alive those who are receiving the work that you've already done in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we come before your throne. And we come lifting up the prayer concerns. We come, Lord, pleading the blood on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Haiti and in the surrounding regions. We come pleading for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. We come pleading for those who are being affected and ravaged by the COVID virus. We even come pleading for those who uh, because of just hard-headedness and misinformation and being led down the wrong paths, have rejected the means that may have prevented them, that most likely would have prevented them from being sick. God, we're praying for them. We're praying for our students and our teachers. We're praying for our families. We're praying for our foster care system. We're praying for our young people all over. And God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're able to do all things but fail. So touch now, bless now, heal now, restore now, feed now, clothe now. And God, wherever your servants, wherever your people, us, wherever we are useful to be your instruments, cut, touch our hearts by the Holy Spirit that we might respond appropriately. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor, for that. Next, we will be moving into our tithes and offerings uh, given by Re Brother 
Phil Hillman. Good morning, church. Good morning. Thank you, Reverend Danny, for that for that powerful word that you gave us this morning. I just want to lift up Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. Three times a year, you must appear before the Lord your God at a place he will choose. No one should appear before the Lord empty handed. Each of you must bring a gift, an offering in proportion to the way the Lord has blessed you. Let me give you that one gift. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord has blessed you. As you prepare to give today, ask yourself, what is the blessing of forgiveness of sins and everlasting life worth? What is the blessings of good health worth? What is the blessings of food on your table worth? What is the blessings of a roof over your head worth? These are blessings we tend to take for granted. As we give today, ask yourself, what are these blessings worth? Please join me in praying our offering prayer. I give today as a part of my worship. My giving is an act of faith. I trust you, Lord, and I believe your word. My giving reflects my gratitude for all you have blessed me with. And in my giving, I plant the seed in the rich soil of the kingdom. Help me, Lord, as I learn to walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we prepare to give today, if you have a smartphone, uh, you can just text SB Cambridge to 73256. Uh, you can give in using the text message, you can do cash app, dollar sign SB Cambridge. Also, you can mail to St. Paul AME Church. Please use 85 Bishop Allen Drive, Cambridge, Mass. Thank you. And as you give, remember, God loves a generous giver. Amen, amen. So now, as we spend time to give our gifts back to the Lord, gives our tithes and offerings, I will see if Brother Bobby Tynes is available to give us a spectacular solo. Oh my goodness. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you so much. What a beautiful service today. Um, I have uh, queued up the old rugged cross, and I think it goes right along with our service. You can hear me, right? Ah, oh, great. <laughs>
so much for that wonderful, wonderful selection. And yes, it was one perfect aligned with the message that we heard today. So I will be taking everyone through our morning announcements for this week. First, I want to talk about corporate. I, I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background, but I apologize for it. First, first, I'll take you through our corporate prayer. Monday through Friday, please join us at 6 a.m. or 9.30 p.m. to dial in. The number is 515-604-9099. The access code is 389-733-722. We welcome all of our guests. If you are interested in being a part of the St. Paul AME family or just letting us know that you are a guest, please text guest to 617-860-3777. And you can text join if you would like to join us um, to the same number, 617-860-3777. 3777. We love you. We want you to know that you are welcomed here and we are excited about communing with you even in this virtual environment. Our mission at St. Paul is to introduce all people to Jesus and help them follow him. Our overall vision at St. Paul AME Church is to seek to develop God-focused followers of Christ who are committed to kingdom building by implementing the Great Commission, making disciples and making disciples and judging them, um, guiding them, judging, guiding them towards maturity. If you are interested in seeing any of our past services, you can find us on YouTube by searching St. Paul AME Church Cambridge. And also feel free to find us, follow us, uh, tweet at us through our social media handles. Uh, Facebook, it would be backslash St. Paul AME Cambridge. For Twitter, it is at St. Paul Cambridge. And for Instagram, it would be at St. St dot paul dot ame dot cambridge youth um, this is a, a reminder youth church recruitment drive starts soon starts now um, do you know any youth ages four to 17 years old are they engaged in a bible-based church program St. Paul's Youth Church offers a Bible-based curriculum, interactive learning um, and discussions, virtual Zoom sessions, so people do not uh, need to be in our state or even in our country. During this program, they will have fun games and activities. If you know any young people that could benefit from this experience, feel free to get in touch with Brother Marshall Stanton his phone number is 617-840-2166. Classes will resume in September. Lastly, our next worship service will be a sun, um, Sunday, August 22nd at 10 a.m. using the same link on Zoom. Um, we are so happy to be here with you. And if you have any questions about the announcements, feel free to reach out through our email address. With that, I will turn it over and we will hear our benediction. Our benediction. Now unto Pastor him first. who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present okay. you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy.